you guys, welcome to the video. So I don't know if you guys can tell, but uh, this is my Canon 80D. I'm filming on this today. I had to ship back my Sony a7 III uh, back for camera repairs because like the audio input for the microphone wasn't working. So had to send that back in. So I'm back on the old Canon 80D. Feels pretty nostalgic. I haven't filmed on it on this camera for like three years. Like I haven't vlogged with this camera in like three years. So. Yeah, a little, little throwback. Anyway, pretty typical day to day. I'm gonna make some breakfast, head off to training, and then I got a lot of work to do this afternoon. So, welcome to the video. Typical Matt Sheldon breakfast. I'm eating this and then heading off to training in like an hour or so. Uh, but I haven't filmed a video in a while. Like, I don't know if you guys have noticed, it's been like a week or so. But uh, that's because eight days ago, when we played our last game against Atlanta United 2, I actually got like a minor concussion. I jumped up in the box kind of late in the second half, got undercut by a defender, and then I just smacked my head against the ground. And I had it wasn't too serious like concussions are always very serious but it wasn't uh so severe that i had memory loss or really had any symptoms really i just had a headache for like 48 hours after the game um so i you know was talking to the team doctor talking to physios the trainer and and just kind of monitoring that being very very careful because i mean concussions are, are scary because if you get another concussion or another head impact or something a couple days later, even a week later after that first injury, it can be like extremely dangerous to the point of like death or like even like career ending. So we've been monitoring a lot and staying off social media, staying off screens, trying to not, you know, overload or overstimulate my brain. Um, just kind of sitting in a dark, dark apartment for the last like three days, but feeling a lot better now. I'm re-entered into training. Everything's going a lot better. But yeah, that's, that's what's been going on the last week or so. But feeling good now. So my microphone and my camera stopped working, but I don't realize it yet. So here I am talking about going to training and how things are going, but here's a little montage for you guys. Yes, Eric. So how many how many more days before you're in full contact bird? He's in the zone. Monday. Monday? So you have to be a week of doing warm up and Okay, here's my world famous smoothie recipe. What we're gonna do is add in some orange juice to about there. Add in a little bit of water, then we're gonna add in some strawberries, add in some peaches. My world famous smoothie recipe changes day to day as well, if you guys haven't realized this, but <laughs> it's just whatever I got. So here's some spinach, throwing a little handful of spinach. Got some strawberry Greek yogurt going into the mix. Um, once I actually get it into the mix. And then I add in 40 grams of whey protein. So this is like from Momentus, but I do two packs. So it's like 20 grams each, 40 grams of protein. I put on the lid and then bada boom, bada bang. That's my smoothie recipe. 
delicious. I'm going to give this one a, a, a 10 out of 10. I haven't had a smoothie that's not been 10 out of 10 for a while. And then here I am uh, doing my, one of my Zoom calls for the day. And after the Zoom call, doing my classic nap, Gooster decided to, to hang out with me. But here I finally realized my microphone is not working. So I realized for about half my day, my, uh, my microphone wasn't working. I've just been having a lot of camera issues lately, which has been frustrating. Um, and I already filmed like this full talk. I filmed <laughs> all day today. And most of the footage I just, you know, as you saw, I can't really use. Uh, but whatever. Anyway, I'm gonna redo this, this talk now about mindset and how I approach trials. So here we go, take two. Okay, so one thing that you'll realize as you progress up from like youth soccer to the professional level is that it's no longer just about are you good enough to make the team. More and more variables start to pop up as you go from trialing with youth teams to semi-pro teams to professional level teams. As a youth player trying out for a team, the process is fairly simple. It might look something like this. First, are you at the level of the youth team? Does the coach see potential in you as a player? Is there space in the team's roster for you? And finally, do you wanna join the team? If every single question can be checked off, then most likely you'll join the team. But if the answer is no to any one of those questions, you probably won't join the team. Now as a professional level player trialing for a team, it's no longer just about are you good enough? Now more factors start to pop up because you're now a grown adult with responsibilities and sometimes a family that you need to account for as well. The trial process for a pro player might look something like this. First, are you at the level of a professional footballer? Does the coach see you helping his or her team? Do you fit the style of play or the identity of the team? Is there space in the team's roster for you? What is the competition like in your position? Do you see yourself getting playing time? What are the facilities like, the trainings, the overall environment of the club? Do you see yourself progressing your career there? If you're transferring from another club, is the transfer window even open? If you're a foreigner, is there an international spot available for you? If you're a foreigner, can the team secure a work permit or visa for you? Is there enough money left over in the team's budget for player salaries to sign you? Did the team offer you a satisfactory contract or can you negotiate up to a satisfactory contract? Does the location of the physical team meet you or your family's needs? Does the length of the contract that the club offered you make sense to relocate? Does the housing situation work for you or your family's needs? Did you end up passing the team's physical or health checkup? And finally, do you want to join this club? Every single one of those 15 plus questions has to be checked off in order for you to finally put pen to paper and sign that contract. And I've been stopped or I've had a, a contract fall through at many different stages of those 15 questions. I've been stopped at question number one. You know, once I dropped out of college, I've been stopped at that first question and I've gone to trials and the coach just said, no, you're not at the level of a pro player, maybe in a year, but you need to have more experience, you need more training, you need this, 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 this. I've gone to a trial, had the coach really like me, wants to sign me, but he says, look, we only have a few hundred bucks left over per month to sign you. Does this work for you? And many times I can't survive off that amount and I have to turn it down. I've been the foreigner that's gone on trial in a foreign country and you show up on the team and you realize that they've already signed the max number of foreigners, so there's no way they can sign you. I've traveled with a team and they already have three professional right backs and, and you're sitting there and you have to outperform them. And even though you did well, even though you performed and you're at the, at the level, there's already three players, so it doesn't make sense to sign a fourth right back. That's why I use the phrase, sometimes the stars have to align in order to sign a pro contract. And I wanna throw out a huge, huge disclaimer, that statement's only true if you're at the level of a professional footballer. If you're not, it doesn't matter how many trials you go on to, you will never have the stars align and you will never sign a pro contract. But if you are at the pro level, you need to realize that it's not just about being good enough and that there's many other filters that need to be gone through and many other questions that need to be passed in order for it to work out and for you to sign for the team. Are you good enough to play for this team is just filter number one out of 15. Now, why am I telling you this? Why am I explaining how hard it is to actually sign a contract? Because the earlier you start realizing that's how it works and it's not just about are you good enough to play for this team, the easier it is to go into trial after trial and face rejection after rejection. This mindset that I'm talking about is something that I call a balance of humble self-awareness 
and confident opportunism. And by that, I mean you need to be able to go into every single trial, tryout, wherever with enough humility to really honestly gauge your level against the players on the team and to really evaluate your skill set versus their skill set, be humble enough to talk to the coaches, receive criticism, and figure out what you need to work on if you are not at the level. But you also need to have this confidence to realize that sometimes things don't work out because sometimes those stars aren't aligning. And you need to be able to bounce back quickly from that rejection and move on to the next opportunity with just the same level of confidence that you came into the first trial. Humble self-awareness about your game and your level paired with confidence and chasing after every opportunity. I have no clue if that's gonna help you guys or if that makes sense, but that's something that I've really, really found to really help me when I go into tryout, trials, preseason with teams, whatever. I've just been answering emails, doing a little bit of work, filming stuff, editing, typical become lead stuff. It is 5.50 in the evening right now. I have a Zoom call, another Zoom call today at six, so I'm like eight minutes. So I gotta go run over there, get all set up and uh, do one more Zoom call. We're actually gonna splurge tonight and we're gonna get some ramen from downtown. So Mimi's gonna go and pick that up during my Zoom call and then we're gonna have my favorite ramen like in Tulsa, it's called Jinya, but they've messed up our order the last two times. So hopefully, <laughs> every time we've been there, they've messed up our order. So hopefully if they get it right, it's it's the best ramen place in Tulsa, Jinya. Only tell them the name if it actually. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna, I'll bleep this out if they mess it up again. Ah, look at Colton's head. Hey, do you want to say uh, do you want to say what's up to my vlog? Yeah, sure. Nah, hold on, let me bring my camera over. Oh shit, that's creepy. What's going on, bro? You want to you want to say a little bit about yourself? Yeah, man. Uh, my name is Edgar. I'm over here playing for Merced United in the UPSL, and um, check me out, I guess. <laughs> yeah, what's your what, what's your Instagram? Uh, Shot Edgar, S H O T S E D G A R. All right, awesome. All right, I'm gonna put the camera away, then we'll get into our Zoom call, okay? Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you bro. Ready? Thank you. Flip out. I missed this flip out screen, to be honest. If only the microphone would have been reliable. There has to be a camera in there. <laughs> yeah. Um, finished the Zoom call, 7 o'clock at night, Mimi just got back, and she got picked up dinner. Here's Jinya. Did they mess up the order, Mimi, or? I don't know. It was kind of chaotic, and I just, I counted the items, but I didn't trick the items. Oh, yeah. Well, hopefully, it's all there. We'll see soon. Nice little pork ramen bowl. Got two of them. Here's the, uh, the sauce. Just heated them up. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so, we got dinner, big glass of water, and we're gonna watch Peanut Butter Falcon tonight with Shia LaBeouf. Like, I don't understand how you can be so smart and so incredibly stupid at the same time. Uh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> We just finished Peanut Butter Falcon. Maybe. What's your rating of it? 10 out of 10. Probably should have been longer though. Really? 10 out of 10? I'm gonna get. I'll, I'll say 9.5 out of 10. 9. I was gonna give it an 8.5 out of 10. Pretty solid movie. 8.5 out of 10. Peanut Butter Falcon. Uh, now I got some chocolate chip cookies. Hey, dummy. So I'm gonna eat these cookies and then I'm actually going to read a little bit. I have uh, a new book here. Uh, I'm excited about it. It's it's Tim Grover's, like if you guys know, my favorite book of all time, Tim Grover's book, Relentless. He came out with another book called Winning. So I'm on like page 40 of it. So I'm gonna be, I'll read that, try to get pretty far into that book. But so far, the first 40 pages are uh, pretty good. I'm gonna, I don't know if it's gonna be, if it's better than Relentless or what, but it's close. So anyway, I'm gonna end the vlog here, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. All right, guys, peace.